Welcome. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph um, y equals negative 1 fourth uh, cotangent of x minus pi halves. Now we notice that we're going to have some transformations here. We, we're going to have some alterations to our original paragraph. First of all, we have a negative, which is going to be a reflection about our x-axis. We're taking our function, multiplying it by 1 fourth, and that's going to kind of dilate our function. It's either going to, uh, that's actually going to horizontally stretch our graph. And then we have x minus pi halves. And since we have a transformation inside of our function, that's going to shift our graph left or right, which we call a phase shift. So before we get into actually our phase shift and all this other transformations, we always want to determine what the period is of the graph. So when dealing with cotangent, the period of the cotangent graph is going to equal pi divided by b, where b is your coefficient of your variable inside your function. Well, in this case, it's 1, so therefore our period is pi. Now, in the cotangent graph, we also have two critical points. We have our x-intercept and our asymptotes. That means um, of a period, you're going to have the distance between, you're going to have your intercept, and then you're going to have your next asymptote. So since there's two critical points, all this two critical points, what we're going to do to find the critical points is just take your period and divide it by 2, which in this case is pi halves. So that what that means is, you know, if I start at a horizontal asymptote, my next critical point, which is my x-intercept, is going to be pi halves away. And then the next critical point, which is my next intercept, is also going to be a distance pi halves away. Uh, so now we have, when we're looking at the cotangent graph, when you look at the parent function, you see that the graph repeats on and on and on, right? So to, to effectively graph a cotangent, what we want to do is we want to look at one period of the graph, which we call the initial period. And the initial period of the cotangent graph starts at 0 and ends at pi. Now, to see how our graph is going to change our initial period, we take what's inside the function and we set it equal to our start and our end of our initial period. Okay. Now, by solving for x, I have x equals pi halves. and x equals 3 pi over 2. Now what that means is my graph is rather than having a, an asymptote at 0 and an asymptote at pi, it's now going to have its first initial asymptote at pi halves and its first initial asymptote at 3 pi halves. So now let's go ahead and graph this. And we'll get into the negative and the 1 fourth here in a second. So we're going to start at pi halves. So I'm just going to say, you know what, this point is pi halves. My graph ends at 3 pi halves. All right. Since my critical points is pi halves between each other, I have a critical point between my two asymptotes, which is going to be at pi. And that's going to be my intercept. Now, remember, the start and the end of each intercept is going to be your, or period, is going to be your asymptote. So I'm going to create asymptotes at these initial periods. The next critical point going in the negative direction is going to be 0. And then going another one would be a negative pi halves which will be another asymptote. Now, I'm only going to graph two periods on this one. So the 1 fourth, like I said, that's going to horizontally stretch our graph. And I don't want to get, I'm not going to get too much into how to find those points. Uh, but what you could do is, you know, just find another point in your period and then evaluate for that point to see how it is on your y, uh, uh, for your y value. Uh, for this one, though, let's just go and look at, let's, let's take a look at what the initial graph would look like without a reflection. So if I was going to graph my period, it would probably look something like this. It's going to be a little bit more stretched. All right? But what we notice is I'm going to have a, a reflection over my x-axis. Therefore, this graph is now going to be reflected over. So my cotangent graph is now going to take more of a shape like a tangent function in this direction. So you're just going to take it originally and then flip it over. And then here's two periods of your cotangent graph with the reflection and phase shift. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. There's graphing cotangent. Thanks.